everyone. We are live at five. It is Tuesday, April 17th. Is that tax day? It yes, is. Tax it is day. Tax day. Get it done. Show. My name is Paul Montori. <laughs> My name is Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we are joined by content producer, Mr. Matt Roden. What's up, everybody? And we have a wonderful guest with us today, SpongeBob SquarePants star, Gavin Lee. We Not a loser. Us. We Not a loser. loser. Not a loser. That's we right. We love Bikini Bottom. We, we love, love Bikini Bottom. We love it bottom. over there. But first, today's top five. All right, we got, finally, we got some share show casting. Say that 10 times fast. Share show casting. <laughs> That's right. And dates. <laughs> so we we already know Stephanie J. Block is playing Cher. And now we, we know that it's going to tell the story of Cher in a couple different stages of her life. And so joining her will be Teal Wicks and Michaela Diamond will so also be playing Two Cher. alphabas. So two alphabas, yes. And, and then Michaela. And Michaela from Jesus Christ Superstar <laughs> Live in Concert. I don't know her. Yeah. So they're they're both so they're joining Stephanie J. Block. Um it will begin at the Neil Simon Theater here on Broadway on November first. It'll open on December third. But first, it is going to the Windy City. It will be in Chicago doing its out of town tryout at the Oriental Theater beginning on June twelfth. Okay, very there's soon. No way I'm not going to Chicago. No, of course. Yeah, no, Absolutely. We gotta go. Absolutely. Yeah. But some other really cool people involved. Jared Spector playing Sonny Bono. Let's I be love clear that. about who these characters these are real life people. These are real life people. Okay, so yes. Sonny Bono so first Jared Spector Jared Spector loves to play real life people. I was gonna say this yes. he loves it. Um <laughs> I wanna go through this. Emily Skinner as Georgia Holt. Her mother. Her mother. Oh. Thank you. Um, Michael Barres as Bob Mackey. Her gay. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Campano, another wicked person, as Rob Camaletti. Her bagel boy. Her bagel boy. And Matthew Heidzik as Greg Ullman. Her other husband. Her other husband. Yeah. The other one. Yeah. yeah. So there's their share and her whole family. All set, ready to be in Chicago, and then come here to Broadway, the Cher Show. Uh, Katie Huffman, speaking of Chicago, <laughs> Katie Huffman <laughs> has got a new Broadway gig, Paul. Matron Mama. Matron Mama Morton. That's fun. That is so much fun. Katie Huffman will be in Chicago starting April 23rd, playing Mama. Uh, of course, she won a Tony Award for originating the role of Ula in The Producers, and she's also been in The Nance that That's was a right. Good, I loved that. That was a good Nathan Lane play. I loved uh, play. Dame Edna, the Royal Tour, Steel Pier, Will Rogers Follies, also totally nominated for that. Mm -hmm. She sang Willa Mania, if you go dig out that <gasps> cast album, yes, which I adore. Uh, big Deal and La Cage. So, anyway, mm -hmm. congratulations, Katie. We'll She's see our you neighbor. next door. Uh, we got a new season today for the Signature Theater in D.C. Some exciting things on that list, Ryan. Yeah, so lots of stuff, and you know, we we can't go. Through I always it all. get confused whenever Signature Theater comes up. There are two signature. There's the Signature it's confusing. Theater here. This is the D.C. Signature Theater, so, Arlington, Virginia. Right. So, but some things to be really excited about here: a brand new production of Passion, Stephen Sondheim and James Lapine's Passion. Natasha Diaz. Natasha Diaz is kind of like, I mean, she's a Broadway star. She's Broadway. And alum, she's yeah. but she was just in Grand Hotel. That's right. Uh, which yes. we'll get to in a minute. Which, well, but she's she's also a big signature theater star. Yes, yes. That she's been the star of a lot of their shows. And so one of the things, she, she's going to play Fosca in this passion. She's going to be there later because they're also, Eric Schaefer is directing a production of Grand Hotel. And and, and who will <laughs> Natasha Diaz be playing in that? Elisabetta <laughs> Gruzinskaya. Now, what's interesting about this is she just played Rafaela, Elisabetta Gruzinskaya's lesbian lover, spoiler, oh, in the Encores one. So now that. she's swapping over yeah, to the other side. the other one. Exploring Very cool. two sides to a relationship. <laughs> During the holidays, if you live in Arlington, Virginia, you can go see Billy Elliot, the musical. Um, they're also doing a production of, Stevens, of Simon Stevens's Heisenberg, which was here on Broadway recently mm -hmm. with Mary Louise Parker. Um, Fat, the Fats Waller musical Ain't Misbehavin', direct, uh, choreographed by Camille A. Brown of Once on this Island. That'll be cool. Two world premieres. A world premiere play, Masterpieces of the Oral and Intangible Heritage of Humanity. What? Written by Heather McDonald. Yes, Broadway alum. It's about three women trapped in a museum during a war. Sounds it doesn't bad. say that here, so I you know, knew I that. Know. You did oh, some research. Yeah, I did some you research. You knew something that wasn't on the paper. Exactly. <laughs> there, <laughs> and the other is a world premiere musical, Blackbeard, by John Dempsey and Dana Rowe. John Dempsey wrote The Pirate Queen, so he's he loves pirates. Dana Rowe wrote, wrote Witches of Eastwick. Witches of Eastwick, yes. Yeah. And there will also be a production of George C. Wolfe's Spunk at the signature as well. So lots of cool things to see in the D.C. area. Cool. Um, we found out a couple days ago that Desperate Measures is coming off, going back off Broadway, because it was off Broadway, now it's going back off Broadway. Uh, but we got more casting for that today, Paul. 
But it's at New World Stages now, right? Right. It is. Am I yes. making that up? No. Nope. Yeah, no, no. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it was at the York and now it's at New World Stages. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so Lauren Molina will be, she was here she talking was so about good. it. We'll be yeah. playing Bella Rose again. Connor Ryan will play Johnny Blood. Uh, Gary Marichek as Father Morse. And Peter Said as Sheriff Green. And Nick Wyman as Governor Van Vaughn. I can't say the last name. It's very complicated. There's like, it's longer than super califragilis <laughs> It's like a trick word. Oh I'm my sure God. it's funny in the show. Well, but that's, they all yeah. did it before, but now they'll be joined by new cast member Sarah Parnicki as Susanna Sister slash jo. Sister Mary Jo. That's right. Um, and, oh, sorry, I, 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 I organized this poorly, but uh, okay. there's a new episode I did of Show my People. research again. New episode of Show People, Paul. I don't right. have to talk about show people. Ryan can talk I about Yeah, Ryan, you can talk about it. So it's Katrina Lang, who we love. We're obsessed with Katrina Lang. The band's visits Katrina Lang. She talks about so many interesting things. She had a very eccentric dance teacher when she was growing up. She mm -hmm. talks about that. She talks about how much she loved flying as Arachne in Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. She's obsessed. She wants to add flying to every show. She wants to, add, she wants to fly in the band's visit. You know what? Sure, absolutely. Uh, she's a little shy at the stage door. She talks about that. And she also talks about her recent obsession from watching Blue Planet, Blue Planet with octopuses. So based on what you just said about that interview, yeah. I know that you looked at the cartoons and read the headline. I did, yes. Okay. I, also, I read the whole it. feature. I read the whole feature. I'm kidding. I'm yeah. totally oh kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but and anyway, the cartoons are good, though. Those through. cartoons are good. Those know, cartoons are Ryan really good. Ryan Casey's cartoons. Are anyway, good. the comics. They're not cartoons. Oh, oh comics. Cartoons are, anim uh, cartoons are in motion, all right? I don't know. Oh, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, yes. you're absolutely right. Comics. Sounds like details. Uh, anyway, it's a fun it's, interview. Katrina is awesome. And it's also available as a podcast. Yeah. So to do that if you want. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Paul. Thank you for stopping it, by. It's been my pleasure. Mr. Roden. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about today's guest? I would love to. Gavin Lee earned a Drama Desk and Theater World Award and a Tony and Olivier nomination for originating the role of Bert in Disney's Mary Poppins, did that thing forever. Uh, more recently, he appeared on Broadway as Tenardier in Les Miserables, and uh, right now he's sulking around Bikini Bottom eight times a week, playing the clarinet, tap dancing with four legs in the brand new musical SpongeBob SquarePants, and that is what he is here to talk about today. Uh, if you've got questions for Gavin, which I know, I know that you do, leave them in the comments and we'll get to them as, as soon as we can. We'll get to as many as we can, and now, for now, here is Paul and Gavin. Hello, sir. Hello there. How are you? I'm very well. I'm <laughs> very happy to, to be you. here. I'm very excited to be here. Are you? This is my first live at five. I'm happy to have you. Uh, so, SpongeBob, how's it going? It's great. Yeah. It's such People fun. People are loving still. it. Still, we're six months in. Well, not six months in. Is it? feels oh, like it. Okay. Um, but yeah, people are still loving it. The audiences are fabulous, and stage door's crazy at the end of the night, and that cast keep me young. I'm. It's, weird how you go through your career and you're playing you know the you're the young character and the young person and then right. suddenly oh i'm the old, oldest person in but the i show. still like to think you're a young guy because we're about the same age so yeah, it's yeah. not like you've suddenly gone well, my to point a is mature, spongebob is a very young cast this is just a very young cast <laughs> yes and and it's also you're in a young world yeah you're, you're in bikini bottom yeah and yeah, I mean, it's a yeah, crazy it's young joyful. world full of very young fish Yes, very young fish. <laughs> and so is this, uh, has this elevated your youthful feelings? Are you It's keeping me young. It's keeping me young. Yes. And um, playing this role, uh, I have a great number in Act 2. Very lucky to have a fabulous number that is exhausting. Yes. And all I keep thinking when I'm coming off stage and asking for oxygen and not, never getting it is uh, at least this is keeping me fit. Because <laughs> whenever I'm out of work, I don't tend to go to the gym much and I put on a little bit of weight around my skinny body. I just have this lump around here, like a spare tire. And uh, it's nice to be in a show where I'm actually doing some aerobics. Every yes, day. yes, looking good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, who is this guy you play? He's a very well-known character. He is a very well-known character. Squidward Kill Tentacles. Um, I hadn't watched the, I wasn't a big fan of the cartoon. Um, I guess it started when I was already an adult and never really got into right. it. And, uh, so obviously, uh, binge watched when I first got my audition. Um, I was like, oh, well, he's obviously the best character in the TV cartoon. I want to play that one, <laughs> right. in my opinion, only in my opinion. Because um, he's just such a grump. He's just yeah. so negative And how great to be on stage when everyone's being so happy and lively. And you can just be like, <laughs> all the time. It's fabulous. Right. And uh, I'm like that in the show. You know, I, I never have to smile until my big number where I think all my dreams are coming true. And I'm appearing on Broadway. Yeah. Of course, by the end, maybe it's all a dream and I'm back to the grumpiness. But um, 
He's he's just the neighborhood the neighbor who's the grumpy neighbor that right. says, "Get off my lawn! Right. Stop making that noise!" Right. You know, right. he's a recluse. No one understands him. In in the Broadway version, I've got a dead mother that I talk to a lot. You know, we can get really deep, but but in the end, we're talking about a squid, so let's not yeah. get that deep. I love what I love about this show is how these. You know, I didn't know it either when mm. I went to see it, and, and you don't you don't need to. Right. You don't need you don't to need watch to. like 10 episodes but, to understand But I loved show. after I saw it, I, and, and the costumes are so clever and, and so original. And then when you afterwards kind of look at what the real character is, it's so fascinating to see how they were c- turned into these humans. humans. And, and how it's, it's you, it's Gavin Lee, but it's also Squidward. And it's so fascinating how the human elements of it and the, the costuming elements that sort of bring out the character. So yeah. I'm assuming in the, when you went in for it, you knew they weren't going to put you in a big... As uh, if I, yeah, I, if they just said, it's for, for, for Squidward and you'll look like Squidward and basically you'll have a big zip up the back from, right, the, from exactly. your butt to the top of your head and you'll just be covered and we might see your face. Right. I would have been, no thanks. Right, exactly. That's not something That's, I would have yeah. wanted to do. The fact that from... For my very first audition, Tina Lando, our fabulous creator director, was mm-hmm. like, "You are not Squidward. You are the. You are a human version of that TV, that two D cartoon. Yeah. Um, I don't want you to come in here on your first audition and nail the voice because I don't want you right. to sound like him for two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you had to listen to Squidward and SpongeBob how he sounds in the cartoon, like that for two and a half hours, right. you'd be like." Can you just mute yourself? Right, right. So we all, um, from the top of the show, try and get across that voice so you know exactly who mm-hmm. we are. Because we don't particularly look like right. the cartoon, but David Zinn's designs of the yeah. costume are just enough. Mm-hmm. Like, if we all stood in a line, a SpongeBob fan would obviously have to pick, pick out who's who, but mm-hmm. it's not that obvious. Yeah. Um, but you're right, they're, they're, our souvenir brochures just come out and they have this fabulous page where they show the cartoon uh, and then David Zinn's costume design, his drawing, and then us. Oh, wow. And it's so interesting. It's cool. like if you look at the first one and the last one, they don't look particularly the same, but adding in David Zinn's uh-huh. creative process in the middle, you're like, oh, yeah, it's just yeah. really clever that you, we don't need to all have all the, all the fish in the sea uh, in Bikini Bottom. They don't, we don't all need to have tails. Right. We have fish tails. We don't really right. need to be scaly. Right for you to just get the idea that right. we're all some kind of sea creature, but we're this human version because mm-hmm. we want to give you a Broadway musical with human feelings and a storyline. It's not just, it's not a 2D cartoon on stage. Yeah. I first saw you on Broadway upside down. Yes. Yes, you were fantastic in Mary Poppins. And that Thank was you. a role that brought you to Broadway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you did it in London. And then they were like, we got to get that guy to do it again. Oh, well, I, I mean, that was just amazing when, um, I know they were, when I heard they were auditioning for Broadway, we'd opened in London. And uh, um, me and the the girl playing uh, Mary Poppins at that time, uh, we just kind of told, you're kind of the benchmark, but we're auditioning for every role. <laughs> and so you were like, hmm. Hope they don't find anyone. And right. I was the very lucky one person from the London cast right. that they said we'd like you to come. Yeah. And uh, randomly, it was um, Gavin Creel was auditioning for it, and and he was like, going to be the Burt for Broadway. And they decided, very lucky for me and for Gavin, that I came and did Broadway, and then he'd replace me in London. Wow. Yeah, um, I remember. And yeah. so he was over the moon because he'd never performed in London yeah. before. Since now, since he's done three major shows in London, he's just like a world. He's an Olivier winner. winner. Exactly. Yeah. He is. Um, <laughs> but that's how I got to know Gavin Creel. So I'm good friends with Gavin. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you have to be g- because you both have the name. Exactly. And people are going to ask And there's, ask only, there's actually only two other. letters different. He has a C and an R right. in his yeah. fir- surname. Otherwise, we're all we're both a Lee. But he's right. Eel. <laughs> Cre- Eel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so Mary Poppins brought me here, and I loved it, and I've been here ever since. I went back to London for a year to do Top, uh, hat. top hat, play I the lead in Top Hat. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, gosh, I love that role. That was great. And it was great to go back to London for a year after being in the U.S. for six, just to see whether me and my wife had made the right decision where right. we wanted to live. And it was great to go back to London mm-hmm. for a year, but we were like, no, nope, we want to get back to the mm-hmm. U.S., I mean, I, I'll go wherever the work is. So, you know, if another lovely job like Top Hat came up in London, I'd go. Right, but right. but uh, we love living here. And Mary Poppins was brought me so many things. Yeah. And it seems now that I basically have to be in a Broadway show. I have to uh, have a gimmick so right. with tap shoes on. <laughs> Either I tap dance <laughs> you, you, upside down or I right. tap dance 
with full tap shoes on. Right. Yeah, you were tapping upside down. I should, I should, I should clarify that for <laughs> yeah. the people who didn't see that, uh, which was amazing. And now you do. You wear extra legs. I wear extra legs, yeah. which are a pain in the neck, but they're worth it because they're fantastic. Yeah. I mean, everyone comments on these ridiculous extra legs that I have. And we worked really hard from the Chicago tryout. When we finally got to Broadway, mm -hmm. we went back to the drawing board um, and I was very involved with the making of the legs. Um, cool. Just because I, I really wanted those two fake legs that are attached to the back of me to look like the front two. I didn't want it to look like, well, they're your legs and they're two mm -hmm. crappy false ones on yeah, the back. Yeah, you succeeded. And I, I wanted it to be like, if you could twist my torso 180 degrees, you wouldn't know which legs right. were real. So we did a lot of adjustments, me standing in front of a mirror and people poking me and pinning me with false legs and changing heights of kneecaps and <laughs> ankles and where it is on my hip. And wow. in Chicago, I actually had a fake butt in my pants oh. and my legs started a bit lower and that's where we realized we don't need the butt. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my back legs, the, like, the hip joint is at the same place as my hip joint. So everything's very asymmetrical. So what happened to the fake butt? They're in storage somewhere. They're, I'm sure they're like, they're like, they're understudies. You know, if ever my legs break, um, it'll be like, get the Chicago legs on. And, uh, and I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember how these feel. Hey Matt, hey, what? Uh, are there any questions? From oh my online? goodness, are there so many questions. Um, I just read about this and Billy just asked about it. How did you get involved with Mary Poppins? I think the story is interesting. How do I get involved with Mary yeah. Poppins? Yeah. Um, well, I just, I um, originally, my agent in London said, I'll oh, have an audition for you for Bert. But you've been doing a lot of musicals. Yeah, there, yeah, I've been out. playing a couple of leads and things and right. understudying a lot um, yeah. in the West End. Um, and I went in um, with a, I asked for a song sung in Cockney and uh, I'd done Me and My Girl. So I thought I could do a song from Me and My Girl, which is of course a very Cockney. But in the end I did a song from Crazy Few, which was actually my first lead role. Um, I played Bobby child in Crazy Few. So I actually did I Got Rhythm with a Cockney accent. Uh -huh. Which I thought, this might be fun. And it obviously worked very well because Cameron McIntosh sit, immediately said, could you go to the office and learn the Burt songs and da 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 da. So I went through a few auditions and uh, it was over a space of about four months and finally it was down to me and another guy. And I was very lucky to get the role. But I then found out later on that the choreographer, Stephen Meir, uh, who I'd worked with a lot, and Anthony Drew, who was one of the Mm -hmm. who was the lyricist of the new songs, They'd, they really wanted me because they knew me. Um, but Cameron McIntosh being who he is, he likes to discover his new people. Oh. <laughs> so I didn't know this, but th Cameron thought I was coming in for an understudy, but, mm. and, uh, and then, he, then I must have done a, a nice audition. And he was like, I want you to go and learn the stuff. And so it was like, he's not the understudy, he's the role. And so... Uh, <laughs> So they had to trick Cameron, basically. They kind of tricked we're gonna, we're gonna Cameron, and they, 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 they tricked me maybe. a bit. I mean, I guess I, I would have still gone in for the audition. Right. Um, but randomly, at the exact same time, I was going in for the producers, because mm. the producers opened later in London than right. on Broadway. It was a few years after. So I was to up for... Leo? To uh, to un But it, that was just to understudy Leo. Okay. Okay. And uh, we. I then got offered the understudy Leo, and we had to hold them off. And randomly, the casting director for that show went a bit and nose out. She went, oh, he'd rather play understudy Bert than understudy Leo. And my agent was like, no, the role of Bert. So, right. so yeah. uh, it was, it was, I was very upset that I've never done the producers. I would love to play Leo. Yeah. I think I'm getting a little bit old now, which is happening with most of the roles I really want to play. <laughs> um, so that would have been nice to have been in the producers in London. But uh, of course, getting to do Bert and then coming to Broadway was Amazing. And Mary Poppins was a huge deal when it opened in London. Everyone was really, I remember. Yeah. Right? And then they, they sort of changed it for New York. For Broadway. They, made yeah, it, they just interesting. made it a little more Disney, mm -hmm. a little more colorful for like yeah. Jolly Holiday and numbers like yeah, that. Yeah. And uh, it was nice. And then I went off on the national tour with Ashley Brown. We right. both left the Broadway show to go and play the leads on the national tour. And they, all the creators came back again and tweaked it again because wow. it was the first time the show had toured and the set, you know how big that set was for Mary Poppins. And they had to be made different. It was like this right. little music box that right, opened. Right, right, it was, right, it was right. great. It was a great experience. I did the show for eight years in total. Eight years. Eight years I played Bert. Crazy. In London, New York, National Crazy. Tour, and then back in New York. Those steps are like in, in are so oh, in your Oh, yeah. Body. I'll never forget that SU, the, the, the super California <laughs> choreography is just ingrained. Um, speaking of dream roles, David wants to know, do you have any dream roles for straight plays or musicals? I, my two dream roles have always been my dream roles, and I think I'm too old to play them both now. I want to play the lead in How to Succeed, 
but seeing as a Daniel Radcliffe played it a few years ago and he's like eight, <laughs> then I'm too I old. I would watch you do it. I would do it, yeah, come um, on. I, just, I love it. Uh, uh, um, I saw John Stamos do it, then uh, Matthew Broderick, he yeah, took yeah. for Matthew Broderick, and I just thought he was so funny and great and I l fell in love with that production. Um, and the other, the other leading role I would love to play in a musical, which again, I think I'm too old, is to play the lead in Big. You Ooh. remember the kind oh. of Broadway flop of, of Tom yeah, Hanks' yeah. movie Big? We're due yeah. for a revival of that. I mean, how great to be a grown-up man but play a 12-year-old. Yeah. I mean, and I oh, just, yeah. I never saw the show because I was in London and I, the short time it was on, I didn't mm -hmm. fly over here. But I had the, sound, uh, the soundtrack, the album, and I think that would be great to play that role. I like that act one song, Cross the Line, with all the kids. Oh, yeah. Two nights, the night. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm, you know what I'm mm, talking about? Oh, I love that song. <laughs> um, Haley wants to know, what's your favorite line in the show, yours or otherwise? My favorite line in the show is not going to sound remotely funny or make sense. Okay. But Karen, the computer, says it. And she says, and next to the mop. And that's all I'm going to say. You have to come and see the show. <laughs> it and really it, gets you. The way that Stephanie Shu delivers it. It's so funny that she just says, and next to the mop. It's such a random line. <laughs> She's talking about where the avalanche um, maker is, uh, Plankton's avalanche maker, and it happens to be in the, clean, in the closet with the cleaning supplies. And she does a whole list of <laughs> next to the tornado maker 6000 and the da 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 da, and next to the mop. And I listen to it every night. I think it's so funny. <laughs> um, da -da 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 -da. Skylar wants to know what's the hardest part about learning how to tap with those legs? I was left to my own devices. Uh, Chris Catelli, obviously, like me, had never had any experience of what you can do with four tap shoes on. Right. Um, so he was very. Are they actually tap shoes? Are they yep, taps? Yeah, the there's four. There's the four identical tap shoes. Two have my feet in. Two have wooden fake feet in, oh. but all attached to me. And um, Chris just said, "Just go away and see what noises you can make, mm. and try and make interesting noises with the front and the back." So I did, and. Uh, I listen to kind of, I have a nice big tap solo in my number. And so I listened to what music that was and I kind of worked it out in front of the mirror on my own. And then Chris Catelli, our fabulous choreographer, looked at it, tweaked it, cut this, put, say, try that. And we collaborated and came up with a, I think a really fun tap solo. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's hard to make those back feet do exactly what you want. And actually I've realized over the months the f sl uh, sloppier you are with your tap, usually you want your, your ankles, they have to be relaxed, but you know, everything needs to be clipped mm -hmm. and to make nice sound. With those back ones on, the more flappy and sloppy you are, the back ones kind of make extra noises after your feet Got out. It, right. So you make double the, double right. the sound. But um, it's been real fun to learn how to tap with four shoes, just like it was real fun to learn to tap upside down. So I don't know what the next thing, the next thing will be, learn to tap underwater. There learn to is. tap yeah, while you're right. being ex uh, shot out of a cannon. I don't know. Um, uh, this this is ahead. an interesting question mm -hmm. from George. He said, how, do you, how did you feel having to be responsible for your own harness wiring in Mary Poppins when you played Bird on Broadway? In London, was there someone to help you with each performance? Um, uh, it, do you know what? It's just a different department in, in London and uh, New York, as in who, who checked it with me. Mm -hmm. they, they never leave you to do it all yourself. Yeah. Um, there's always someone from F Foy flying, it was for, for here, someone that knows what they're talking about when it comes to harnesses, the clips, the wires. It's all, their safety is obviously the number one thing. But then when you get into the run of the show, um, I would put my harness on um, upstairs. My dresser would double, I would click it. He would double check it, and then when you went down onto the stage, someone else would would check. So there's always there's there's always backup yeah, people of course, checking. Yeah. And the good thing about any kind of flying now, it's all on computer, so it's all exactly the same every night. There's no way it's oh, going to be right. like, oh, the wire didn't take you up to the right place this time. Right. It's on in a computer, and the computer's like, Pff, you're going to there every night. Karen, so the computer's pulling Karen, the computer's doing all, pulling the strings. And with the one-liners, too. <laughs> that one. Right. Um, last but not least, Haley wants to know, what is it like working with Tina Landau? She is, I can say, in my 20-plus years of uh, being an actor and all the shows I've been lucky enough to do, she is the best leader ever. On day one of the Broadway rehearsals, we uh, admittedly a lot of us had done Chicago, so we knew each other, and we were just so happy to all be back in a room together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there were a, a, at least a third of the cast were new. On day one, she had us all in a circle, and everyone just uh, releasing anything they wanted to say, 
and people were crying and talking about things that you would never normally talk to a stranger with. But she has this ability of getting mm -hmm. us all together and making us feel safe in this circle. And that's with SpongeBob, it being so creative and so um, spontaneous, all yeah. the scenes and all her ideas, like, what do you think? It's always, what do you think? If you come up with something better than I've just told you to do, do it. I will say yes or no, but I want to see all your ideas. Anything you can bring into that rehearsal room, whether it's a prop you think might be funny to have in Bikini Bottom, or you, you can do something, you can juggle, we'll try and get it in. You can unicycle, we'll try and get it in the show. And that was just so exciting for an actor not to be told, stand here, right. Right. say this line. It was so open to everyone and their ideas. I mean, she of course had the most ideas. <laughs> and the whole show is her idea, but we've all had a little bit of help yeah. making it what it yeah. is. Wow. And she's she's a brilliant leader. She is brilliant. I can't wait to see what she does next. She's so she's so off talented. at Steppenwolf doing a farce at the moment. Right. So, she um, so she's missing. We're missing her, and she's missing us. So she'll be back soon to give us more notes. She's also comes in and gives us a lot of notes, which I don't mind. I just like I always want to be feeding off things that, as a show goes on, you start drifting off in the wrong direction. Like the beginning of my song, she came in after about two months, and she went, "You're putting too many movements to that beginning of the song." Hmm. Try, try a show, just stand there and do those, say those lyrics, lyrics again. And I was like, oh, it's gonna be really boring, I'm not gonna make this work. But I did it and I felt so much more. I mean, my mm. song starts off pretty sad before it gets really Broadway. Um, and she was right. I I'd, I'd started putting movements to everything and you don't need it. And so wow. it's great that she keeps coming back and pointing us back down the right path. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Everyone needs to see SpongeBob SquarePants. It's You're so making good. me wanna go see it right and now. And you know so what I wanna say? You, I'm g I hear people that say, oh, SpongeBob, yeah, my kids don't watch that. And so that's kind of like their cut of like, so we won't be coming to it. Right. And I just want to say, I didn't watch it. Yeah, me neither. My kids don't watch it. Right. You do not need to see it. And it's not, it's not the TV show on no. stage. No, it's not its at all. own thing that is so creative mm -hmm. and visually stunning. And come see it. I love it. I love it so much. I can't wait to see it again. I want to go right now. <laughs> let's all go see Sponge-Bob tonight. Come, come on, Come all on, right, let's go. Let's do that. <laughs> uh, Gavin, thank you so much for coming by. This has been fun. It's at the Palace Theater. Most beautiful theater on Broadway. Yeah. I mean, it's up there. It's beautiful. Uh, hey, Mr. Matt Roden, why don't yeah. you take us out? You guys know the deal. We do this every single weekday live at 5 p.m. That's why it's called Live at 5. Here on Broadway.com's Facebook page. It goes up on YouTube. goes up on Broadway.com. goes up on the Apple TV apps. We also release this as a podcast if you're a, if you're a podcast person. So subscribe to the Live at 5 podcast. Join us tomorrow when... Mr. Robert Creighton from Frozen will be here to, uh, it's going to make be th make things chilly. I was trying to come up with some sort of like segue thing. Didn't really work. Uh, have a great Tuesday, everybody. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>